Hey guys, this is Clinton Jeff from UnleashTheFones.com and here's a quick review of the HTC One M8. Now the 2014 HTC One is officially known as the HTC One open bracket M8 close bracket but for the purpose of this review I'm just going to refer to it as the HTC One. It's going to make things a lot more simpler for me and you. Alright, so with this year's model, you pretty much get what you expected. The screen is larger, there's the same boom sound speakers right over there, um, and it's completely clad in metal. Um, one of the new things though is that there's two cameras at the back, which is very unusual for any um, mobile phone, even in this day and age. Um, and it does a couple of interesting things. But uh, let's start with design first. Uh, the 2014 HTC One looks pretty beautiful. The original one from last year actually was pretty much the epitome of design. It looked really beautiful. It was one nice slab of metal and was very sleek. Um, HTC has arguably improved on that. Um, whether you like the new design or the old design is well, up to each and every one of you. Um, I personally do like the new design better, um, but a lot of other people do prefer the old HTC One's design better. Um, but at the end of the day, they're both beautiful looking phones, um, and arguably it, they do look a lot better than any of the uh, plastic other flagships out there. Right you now. have more metal in the construction now compared to last year's model. Uh, this year's flagship actually has 90% metal all around, um, which is pretty amazing. Last year's model had about 70% metal all around. And you'll see that even the trim of this year's model is all metal um, and the polished aluminium goes all around the frame, which is quite an achievement by HTC. Um, to be honest, the only place where you have plastic is the top and this is to allow the infrared receiver which is over here to send and communicate with other devices. So it is quite amazing how HTC has done this. The phone feels very comfortable to hold thanks to the nice curve of the back and uh, no seams at all anywhere. It is really a great looking phone at the end of the day. Alright, so as you can see we got the gunmetal grey version which looks nice-ish. Um, it's not really a shade of grey color, it's not even black, it's just a, it's a strange shade um, with brushed aluminium all around. Uh, it does look nice but the HTC One M8 also comes in glacial silver um, if you prefer that. That looks more like the last year's uh, silver and there's also an amber gold version. Moving on, thanks to all of that seamless construction, the HTC One is very solid and very sturdy in terms of build quality. It measures 146 by 70 by 9 millimeters, so it's a bit tall for a phone, especially a phone that has a 5 inch screen which is already quite big, but that's because of the boom sound speakers at the top and the bottom of the screen. But the smooth edges all around and the gentle curve of the rear casing does mean that this is a very comfortable phone to use and it's actually kind of easy to get to all corners of the screen. Now the down side to this is that the phone does weigh 160 grams. It's not very heavy but compared to the other plastic phones out there like the Galaxy S5 which is 145 grams or the LG G2 which is 143 grams it's still a little heavy. That being said it's a lot lighter than the Sony Xperia Z2 which is 163 grams. Coming to the front of the HTC One you'll now notice that there are no capacitive buttons like on the old one. Instead you have on-screen buttons for back home and a multitasking button right over there just like Google intended it to be. You still have the same signature to front facing HTC boom sound speakers now one at the top and one at the bottom. They're supposed to be 25% louder than the old HTC One and can output up to 95 decibels apparently. One thing that is slightly annoying is that HTC has placed a giant black bar right over here with the HTC branding. Apparently there is circuitry and sensors under this black bar but it still kind of seems like wasted space when HTC could have put their branding somewhere else. But that being said, it never gets in the way of using the phone. You eventually forget that it's there so it's not a big issue Now taking all. up most of the space at the front is the huge 5 inch Super LCD 3080p display. It has about 441 ppi which means it's pretty insane, very high resolution and it looks great. Um, last year's version by comparison had a 4.7 inch display. So HTC has gone up slightly more. Now there were rumors that manufacturers were going to go crazy with 2K resolution 
displays but I'm actually really happy that HTC has stuck to a 1080p display because it does look great and uh, no complaints at all because it's a LCD screen you can see it really well outside in direct sunlight and the display quality has improved compared to last year's model. HTC has always had really great displays all the way from the HTC One X to the HTC One to the brand new HTC One so it's not really a big surprise to see them put a giant beautiful display on this. So no complaints as such, even viewing angles are pretty good. Moving on to the rest of the phone, at the top you'll find a power button and a little plastic trim lining which has the IR blaster underneath. This allows you to use the HTC One as a remote with your TV or entertainment center uh, with the HTC TV app. It does work really well and it is actually kind of cool to change the TV at a pub or a bar in case you're not happy with the channel. I should note that the power button is now on the right side which is actually much easier to get to. Last year's model had the power button on the left side which was a bit of a stretch to get to. On the right side you'll find the space for the micro SD card slot. Yes, this time the HTC One does have a micro SD card slot and you'll find the volume buttons which are very easy to find and very easy to press. Uh, so no complaints there. On the left side you'll just find one port for the SIM card. Of course you will need a SIM card removal pin to remove this and to remove the micro SD. It's also worth noting that the HTC One uses a nano SIM card now. Um, because the ports are all closed, it actually does help the HTC One maintain its uh, slightly waterproof nature. It has an IP3 rating which means it is water resistant so it is splash proof and will probably survive um, a couple drops of water but you shouldn't go swimming with it for sure. Moving on at the bottom of the HTC One you'll find the micro USB charging and connectivity port and the 3.5mm audio jack. I feel like putting the headphone jack at the bottom of a phone is the best way to do it because now when you slip your phone into your pocket and take it out it's in the right orientation. Coming to the back you have the new dual cameras which we'll talk about later on as well as a LED flash. The HTC branding proudly located in the center. At the end of the day very few companies are as daring as HTC and it's nice to see them pursue that whole metal design with the brand new HTC One and it's easily one of the best looking phones. Coming to hardware as you'd expect from a flagship phone nowadays the HTC One is powered by Qualcomm's latest chip a quad-core 2.3 gigahertz Snapdragon 801. Now the Asian version has a slightly faster version of that chip which is clocked at 2.5 gigahertz. Along with that you have an Adreno 330 GPU and 2 GB of RAM. Now because of the specs everything is super fast on the HTC One. There's no lag and everything is really snappy and feels great. Um, there's no lag at all and it's really really nicely done. HTC's done a great job In terms here. of benchmarks, you'll see that the HTC One also does pretty well. And part of the reason for that snappy feeling is actually because the HTC One has the lowest touch latency of any phone right now. The HTC One actually has a touch latency of 49 milliseconds, while the iPhone 5S has 75 milliseconds. So HTC has done a really good job making sure that this phone feels very snappy. The only mildly disappointing thing about the HTC One though is that that it comes with just 16 GB of onboard memory. Of course you do get a micro SD card slot right now but it's still not much memory to work with. I kind of feel like they should have had at least 32 GB of memory on this thing. Apart from that in terms of connectivity the HTC One has Wi-Fi and LTE 4G depending on where you get it from. You have 3G, GPS, Bluetooth 4.0 with Aptex, NFC. Alright so in terms of software the HTC One runs the latest version of Android which is Android 4.4 KitKat with HTC Sense 6.0 on top of that. Now with Sense 6.0 HTC hasn't really changed much in terms of the design language. Um, it retained everything that we actually liked about last year's HTC Sense UI but they put in a couple minor tweaks. For instance uh, the home screen is still arranged in the same layout with blink feed on the leftmost panel and your usual Android uh, widgets and apps on the right side of Blink Feed. Ever since Sense 5.5, you've been able to switch off Blink Feed if you don't want it. Um, and you can also edit the UI and change home screen panels right from here um, and add widgets and such. So, really, not much has changed from that point of view. There's also a Fitbit 
integration right now where the Fitbit app uses the built-in sensors from the HTC One to check out how many steps you've taken in one day, how much distance you've walked, um, any calories burnt, etc, etc. Apart from that, some things have also changed. For example, depending on the built-in Android app that you're using, for example, the dialer app or the messaging app or the calendar app, for example, um, the theme of the highlight colors rather uh, changes so you'll see that the communication apps use um, a blue color highlight so dialing and messaging and email will have a blue color highlight whereas data centric apps like blink feed or the weather will use a green color highlight um, similarly music uses an orange color highlight uh, so that's nice I guess but not a lot of third-party apps use it so it's not something you'll really notice that much uh, Sense 6.0 also has these cool new gestures which help you um, get to the phone faster when, you, when the screen is switched off. HTC calls this motion launch, but basically you can pick up the phone and swipe up to unlock the display. Um, you can also uh, pick up the phone and swipe to the left to get straight to blink feed. Or you can pick up the phone and, uh, pick up the phone and swipe right to get to your app widget screen. Um, now, these are nice gestures for sure, but they all depend on you picking up the phone, which is a little bit annoying uh, because you have to pick up the phone in portrait. Similarly, you can pick up the phone and double tap to wake the screen if you don't want to unlock it. This is nice and you can double tap to lock as well, but the thing is when the screen is unlocked, you can't double tap to lock it. Um, that's another slightly annoying thing. I do wish HTC uh, bought that. The LG G2, for example, has double tap to lock. Um, the gestures are nice, but I'm not sure exactly how useful they'll be. But it's nice that they're there, so I'm not complaining. Similarly, you can also automatically answer a call by just putting the phone next to your ear, like a lot of other phones have been doing for a while now. Um, and with the screen locked, you can also just pick it up and press any of the volume buttons to open up the camera app right over there. So that works very well and this definitely comes in useful. There's also still Google Now which you can get by swiping up from the main screen. Um, and the messaging app is also really nice. And the messaging app also hasn't changed that much apart from the uh, color highlight. You still have the same keyboard which is very easy to type on and you can guide from alphabet to alphabet to type out something and the autocorrect is also pretty good. So no complaints there as such. Apart from that, everything else is basically the same as Sense 5.0 last year. Nothing much has really changed. The web browser is exactly the same. Um, even the gallery app is pretty much the same. Uh, it's, it's more dynamic now thanks to the HTC Zoe uh, video highlights which automatically play as you can see right there. Uh, that's pretty cool and you can um, also sort your timeline based on where you took the pictures and when. The problem though is that if you have WhatsApp installed, you'll see that your WhatsApp pictures are also listed here, which isn't that great unfortunately. Um, but it's a nice way to sort the gallery and the video highlights definitely come in useful. It's a very cool feature that a lot of my friends like. Similarly, when it comes to video, playing video is really nice on the screen because it's a nice 5-inch 1080p screen. HD videos look great and thanks to the boom sound speakers, you can hear any movie really clearly. Uh, coming to the music player, the music player is really nicely done. I, I think the UI is really clean and really simple to get around. Um, and uh, playing music is also really easy to do. Um, generally speaking, the speakers are also really, really loud um, and the visualizer is also very cool. Uh, so you can just get this to play music and put the visualizer on, which pulls in lyrics as well. So I'm definitely a fan of the music experience on the HTC One. Uh, the loudspeakers are really loud, so you can hear music even when you don't have a pair of headphones and when you do plug in a pair of headphones the music is really loud and really clear. At the end of the day HTC Sense 6.0 is a nice visual treat. It's really nice and really simple to use um, and it's really clean looking and compared to other manufacturers HTC hasn't thrown in 
way too many features and they kept it a lot more simple. All right, and coming to the camera, once again, HTC has bet on their ultra pixel camera. The 2014 HTC One uses the same four megapixel uh, one by three sensor, which results in larger than normal two micron pixels. But it comes at the cost of lower image resolution, which is 4 megapixels versus other manufacturers which are going with 13 or 20 megapixel cameras instead. The uh, camera is pretty much exactly the same as the first HTC One, so it's wide angle and features the f2.0 lens. But this time around, they've removed optical image stabilization uh, because it wasn't compatible with the Duo setup. And instead, you have a new smart stabilization, which is supposed to be as good as OIS. The flash module has also gotten a huge upgrade this time around. HTC is calling it Smart Flash, but it's similar to the iPhone 5S and gets more natural colors at night when you use it. But the main thing you'll notice is the second camera right over there. Um, this is the second good camera that allows you to capture depth information, which allows the camera to cast specific focus on to different depths throughout the shot, which allows for some very fun edits. But it is still disappointing that HTC didn't choose to up the resolution on the M8's ultra pixel camera. So here is how the dual camera helps. When you take a picture, you can go and edit it and using the depth information captured by the second camera, uh, you can use this U-focus feature which blurs the background around the object and then you can tap on what you want to focus. So for example, if you want to focus on the background, you can focus on the background which will blur the front or you can just focus on the front which will blur the back. Now this is pretty cool, you can save this image for example. Um, you can also use a bunch of other fun effects. For example, you can go back to edit and go to the foreground effect which is very cool and allows you to cast different effects on the background. Um, you can also go to seasons which isn't really that useful but um, brings in these really fun little things where you can save a picture with maple leaves and cherry blossoms and snow falling. Uh, you can also tilt an image I guess which is a kind of strange feature that I'm not really sure what to do with in Call of Duty. Dimension Plus. Uh, there's also stickers that you can use and there's cut and paste where you can copy and paste the image onto another shot and there's touch-ups where you can touch up the picture. So it's cool I guess. Um, I have taken some really cool shots in daytime. The dual camera doesn't really come in useful at night, unfortunately. This also only works for shots taken in 16 is to 9 aspect ratio. So the dual cameras definitely add a professional enough touch, I guess. Um, if anything, they at least give you a warm, fuzzy feeling whenever you take a picture and edit it. Um, I'm not exactly sure if it's a thing a lot of people will use. Uh, based on just pure camera quality, the HTC One's camera is okay, but it is low resolution. So as a result of that low resolution, you don't actually get as much detail as with higher megapixel cameras. Moving on to the camera UI, HTC has updated the interface with a brand new, cleaner, more organized layout. That's one of the best camera UIs I've actually seen on any phone so far. You now have just a shutter button and a shortcut to your recent pictures. You also have the three dots, which are options. Uh, you also have manual focus, which is crazy, um, and more settings that you can tweak. Uh, you hit this button over here and you can switch between the camera and the video mode and the Zoe camera mode, which is still present from last year's HTC There's One. There's also a selfie mode where it uses an amazing 5 megapixel front facing camera to take a picture and there's dual capture and a panorama mode as well. HTC definitely gets points for how fast it is to take a picture in the HTC One. You just tap the button, it focuses really fast thanks to the two cameras at the back. No complaints over there. Now in terms of video, video quality is also pretty okay. Um, like I said, you don't get as much detail but you can record up to 1080p HD. As long as there's sufficient lighting around, results are pretty good. Um, the HTC One locks focus when you record a video so you will have to touch the screen to focus and adjust it later on. Again, for a better idea of the camera, do check out our post over on niche2phones.com. We have camera samples and videos which you can check out. Okay, and moving on to call quality. Call quality through the HTC One was actually really, really good. Uh, that's because the earpiece at the top is actually one of the boom sound speakers. So voices come in really loud and clear and noise free so you can hear calls even in the noisiest environments. Similarly, the dual front facing speakers come in useful when you want to use the loudspeaker in calls as well. In terms of battery life, the HTC One is powered by a 2600 mAh battery. That might not sound like much, but surprisingly, it's enough for the HTC One to 
to last through an entire day of work usage. I was able to get over 24 hours of usage out of it. Um, it's actually surprising. HTC good. also has a new extreme power saving mode where it conserves CPU usage, reduces screen brightness and turns off vibration and your data connection and basically only allows essential apps to run but it also does this to the phone where you only have your access to essential apps. To conclude, compared to other smartphone flagships out there, the HTC One stands out because of its impeccable design. Honestly, it's one of the best looking smartphones today. It boasts a very stylish and solid metallic body which feels very premium in the hand. Now, the secondary camera definitely helps with focusing. Um, the whole dual camera setup does enhance the look of photos but I would still have liked a higher resolution camera because the current ultra pixel camera can't capture as much detail as rival flagship phones. Still the camera is more than enough for casual usage. And if you check out the blog post you'll see that some of the camera samples are actually pretty good. At the good. end of the day the HTC One is a gorgeous looking smartphone with build quality that will probably not be matched by any other Android manufacturer right now. The phone is really fast, the UI looks great, the booms on speakers are very loud and the screen is a amazing. At the end of the day, the HTC One is a gorgeous looking smartphone with build quality that probably won't be matched by any other manufacturer right now. The phone is fast, the UI looks great, the boom sound speakers are really loud and the screen is fantastic. Honestly, the HTC One has no cons apart from the ultra pixel camera being somewhat low resolution. So that's what I think of the HTC One. For a better idea, do check out our blog post over on unleashthephones.com and if you have any questions, do let me know right in the comment section below.